What's the most wholesome thing you have witnessed? We put our severely autistic child in an institution two years ago. We made the decision to put our 18 year old severely autistic nonverbal child in an institution. I can honestly say it's probably the best thing to ever happen to the family. I was a stay at home parent while my spouse worked 10 to 12 hour days to keep a roof over our heads of food at the table. Living with our child was mostly hell. From the moment they woke up, if they even slept that night, there was never ever a moment of peace, never a quiet easy day. Nothing made them happy, nothing. They were physically abusive towards us and themselves every day. Throwing anything and everything, banging slash kicking anything. They would shut the door to their room, lay on the floor in front of it and just kick it for hours and hours and hours. Think running on the door, sometimes I still feel the way it would vibrate the whole house. Walls would have holes in them, windows broken, they broke five, doors would need replaced yearly. If you weren't paying attention to them you'd get your hair pulled hard, sometimes drugged to the floor or slapped. One time we all shaved our heads so they wouldn't have anything to grab. And oh boy did that make them more angry, you ever seen a grown 16 year old have a total meltdown because they couldn't pull your hair? Communication was always a problem they just refused to learn anything. Not for lack of trying on our end either. The only sign language they took any interest in learning was food. So when you would ask them a question like do you have to use the restroom? They are still in diapers, or do you need help? They would just sign food and if you got it wrong, which was all the time, they'd get angry and have a meltdown. The tablet was never an option, it was always just something to throw. They went to school every day with normal school hours until they were 15, then it got switched to Tuesday and Thursday until they were 17. They became too much for that staff to handle. It was really just something to give us some time to breath. To try and get some things done, but it was never enough. I know those poor teachers were afraid of them, and don't blame them. It was the only break we ever got, and we desperately needed it. My favorite time of day was putting them on that school bus in the morning. Then every time I would dread seeing that bus come back up our road in the afternoon. Sometimes I don't think they were happy to see me either. My other older kids were always stressed and worn down. Heads always on a swivel. It made me feel like a shitty parent. I made sure they all got their driver's license as soon as possible so they could escape. Then I found myself becoming increasingly jealous of them because they could leave. I wanted to leave with them every day, anything was better than being home with them. When COVID hit, that's when things really started to take a turn for the worse. We were all stuck in the house with them. We all felt like prisoners in our own home. It was so stressful clumps of my own hair were falling out. The abuse got worse, and my house was literally falling apart. I had a nervous breakdown and was sent to the hospital for a week, I didn't want to leave, I didn't want to go back home. My other kids slept slash stayed at my parents' house while I was there. Leaving my spouse to go it alone. It was an eye-opener for them, I never really told them how bad it was when they weren't there. So after my stay in the hospital we made phone calls, and they were placed in an institution a month later where they are thriving. They have six people that supervise them constantly, that are just employed for them. Their meds are finally balanced right, they maybe have one issue a week. When we visit they are excited to see us, as we them. We take them out to eat, and to parks. They have an excellent life of their own. Communication is still a little iffy, but I believe. Progress is being made because of those wonderful people. The day we took them to the institution I remember feeling awful for not being upset, for not crying. All I remember feeling was relief and excitement. It took us months to feel some kind of normal like we forgot how to be human. We got so used to being a doormat all the time we didn't know what to do with ourselves. My older kids started staying home more. I got a part-time job just to get me out of the house a couple days a week. It's nice. HR won't do anything about a co-worker who's angry about my weight loss. I just came back to work after a month-long emergency medical leave. After a decade of medical gaslighting, a new doctor ordered an emergency MRI during a routine visit and discovered a mass in my abdomen. I was rushed into surgery within 24 hours. I ended up having an 18-pound benign tumor pressing on my vital organs and I was about a week away from multiple organ failure. I'm lucky to be alive and time will tell if I have any lasting organ damage but right now everything is fine. Mentally I'm struggling with a few things but the only outwardly noticeable impact is that I've gone from a size 20 to a size 8. Nobody on my medical team anticipated a change this drastic but I'm healthy and lucky. I was expecting to get a lot of questions from my co-workers because curiosity exists. I had a basic emergency surgery but I'm fine now answer that almost everyone accepted but one co-worker who I hardly speak to, Aubrey. On my first day back to work, Aubrey came up to me and said, I wish you had come to me to lose weight instead of resorting to such drastic measures. You're going to gain it all back, you know, I'll be waiting. I was aware of Aubrey's reputation but since we never worked together I didn't think it would be an issue. She's one of those people who thinks they're a fitness expert and calls herself a health coach. She has a reputation for giving out unsolicited and incorrect health advice and is always commenting on people's food choices. I was speechless when she asked why I opted to get butchered instead of putting in the hard work to lose the weight. There's nothing wrong with someone choosing surgical weight loss options but that's not what happened to me and I really resented her aggressive attitude. During my second week back, she came by my office at the end of at the time I wasn't even clear to lift my kid, do laundry, or climb a flight of stairs, let alone go to the gym with. This bag of crazy. I don't remember what I said to her, but she left saying I'd gain the weight back because I'm lazy. The next day Aubrey ranted angrily about me in a meeting I wasn't in. I don't know everything that was said, but the gist was that if I can't dedicate myself to weight loss, I obviously can't see my work obligations through. HR called for a red flag mediation. At our company, mediation can go against your bonus opportunities for the year. I have no idea why I'm in mediation when she's the one being an asset. At the mediation, Aubrey stated that she was triggered by my new body and I should have thought of other people's feelings and warned her before my surgery. 
You I hardly had time to warn my husband and get my kid out of daycare. I don't owe Aubrey anything. I have empathy that she's obviously struggling, but that does not excuse her behavior. HR said that while they can't ask me to explain my medical history, it might clear the air if I told her what kind of surgery I had and why. I said I wasn't obligated to share my medical information with anyone and that Aubrey having bad coping skills doesn't entitle her to a co-worker's personal health information. Their response was kind of well, then we can't stop her from bullying you. After Thanksgiving, my doctor helped me put an ADA accommodation paperwork so I could work from home. I was having some mild complications from surgery but also to avoid Aubrey. This company hates remote work so they're really not happy. Aubrey still emails me workout videos and diet plans and when I forward them to HR their response is, noted, do you know when you're coming back to the office? Aubrey is fixated on weight loss which was the primary way doctors gaslit me for years. I've been with this company for 5 years and I'm just exhausted and disappointed in how they're handling this and I want it over yesterday. HR won't do anything about a co-worker who's angry about my weight loss. My boss, George, was getting ready to retire while this was going on. George is roughly my grandfather's age, so this entire situation bewildered both of them and his replacement, who he was training at the time. Both of them met with Aubrey's boss, because believe me I was documenting everything she did from the jump, and they all assured me that Aubrey would be dealt with. None of them recommended the red flag mediation, that was HR's idea. I was given details of the meeting where Aubrey ranted about me and it was horrible, but apparently Aubrey was asked to leave by her own boss while several other employees told her to stop, so managerially and in the office in general, people were trying to rein her in from many different angles. HR is where the ball dropped and dropped hard, this company just has a poor HR structure and bad entry to mid-level HR. When Aubrey's boss referred her to HR regarding her negative behavior, HR took it upon themselves to consider it a mediation situation despite communication from George, his replacement, and Aubrey's boss saying I wasn't in the wrong. When George found out about this, he spoke to the HR generalist manager, who said that my absence probably caused a lot of strain and extra work for Aubrey when Aubrey's not even credentialed to do what I do. Management made a point to tell me how baffled and upset they were with HR's handling of the situation every time something came up. My company mentor was also a huge support during this time until she decided to take another job elsewhere. When my doctor extended my IETA work from home accommodation a second time, HR responded by telling me my attendance was a concern. I emailed their boss's boss, the HR director, and asked for clarification. He said I hadn't come into the office so of course my attendance was a problem. I reiterated I had medical documentation stating that if WFH wasn't available then they could refer to the FMLA documentation my medical team also sent. He replied that medical documentation, including both FMLA and IETA reasonable accommodations, doesn't hold much weight with the company. That's when I got a lawyer. Aubrey as a problem kind of drifted to the background when HR started their medical documentation doesn't matter campaign. On my lawyer's recommendation, I contacted the HR executive team, which is where this whole curse situation came to light. And I did check with my lawyer about emailing this update and they laughed and said I couldn't leave people hanging after all that. I called the chief HR officer, which for my company is going over like this. Five people's heads, but I did it with George's and my new boss's blessings, who was the head of HR, and asked why my attendance was an issue when I had reasonable aid to documentation. She had no idea what I was talking about so I filled her in on all of it, including the mediation meeting and Aubrey's harassment and her direct report saying medical documentation didn't hold any weight with the company. She was speechless and asked to meet with me and my lawyer as soon as possible. My lawyer hardly had to do anything during the meeting because the CHRO was horrified at everything I told her, I've never actually seen steam come out of someone's ears, but if it was physically possible it would have happened here. My lawyer didn't need to say a word but just nodded and smiled when the CHRO offered an extended paid medical leave so I could handle my recovery and said Aubrey constantly sending me fitness plans would be dealt with swiftly. I didn't hear anything out of Aubrey for a long time but I did hear through some gossip channels that the HR staff involved in threatening to write me up or let go. Aubrey wasn't fired because they believed she was misled by HR, so I understand that part even if I don't agree with it, but she was on a tight pip for a while. Then she showed up at my house. Aubrey showed up at my door on a weekend with two other women in tow and the commenters guessed it. She's in very deep with an MLM. Aubrey came over to demonstrate some workout techniques and give me some diet supplement samples and discuss a career opportunity because she was worried about my physical and professional health. She didn't make it past my mother-in-law, who has been a godsend right now. My mother-in-law made it clear where Aubrey could stick her demonstration and they left in a hurry. I notified my lawyer and the CHRO and suffice it to say, Aubrey is now a full-time wellness coach. What is the craziest transformation from someone at your high school? It was when I was a teenager, I was a short, kinda fat, nerdy kid with acne, braces, and long, greasy hair like Kurt Cobain. For some effing reason I cannot, as an adult, fathom, I decided I wanted a perm to look like Gavin Rossdale, except I was still a kinda fat kid with a kinda fat face so I just looked like a fat kid with shitty, dirty, curly hair. It was effing terrible. Now, before you hit reply and bang out the same bullshit that I hear all the time when I tell this story everyone goes through an ugly duckling phase, you're no different, hear me out. I was not your average ugly duckling turned swan. I was a one-tenth. I was effing hideous. Like, girls wouldn't audibly say ew if I so much as smiled at them, sometimes if I just made eye contact. It was debilitating for my fragile teenage psyche, and extremely humiliating and emasculating. I couldn't even get my friend girls to hook me up with any of their friends. My teenage personality didn't help anything. I was one of those attention-seeking loud kids who made horrible jokes and hoped people would laugh with me instead of at me for once. 
seriously, I was a fucking greasy, pimply, fat, loudmouth little troglodyte. That was my life for three years, from age 12 through age 15, a social outcast, a dweeb, a dork, a loser, throw all of them at me cause there ain't nothing new. When I started my first semester of my sophomore year in high school, I was taking smart kid trig. There was a jock in my class, a kid named Jay, who wasn't really smart enough to be in the smart kid classes, but was probably too smart for the regular classes, so here he was, struggling along with things I found easier than a tutorial level in video games. Through some twist of fate or good fortune, or most likely because our last names start with the same first two letters, Jay sat behind me in that trig class. Jay wasn't above cheating, and I wasn't. Above whoring out my brains for a pretend a friend, so we got along like cupcakes and frosting. About a month into the semester, Jay asked me hey, optical delusions, you ever had a girlfriend? Up until this point, Jay and I had never talked about anything other than how awesome he was at everything, which was really more Jay talking and me nodding along, or trig. I didn't really know how to respond, I mean I obviously hadn't had a girlfriend, but that's not the kind of information you let out easily when you're on the bottom tier of the high school food chain. And no, girls don't really like me. I squeaked out, trying to keep my normally loud voice hushed to a whisper without cracking. Puberty is the effing worst dude, when do you get those braces off? Jay was staring at my face, judging every crack, every pockmark, every pimple, everything. I could feel it, but it didn't feel the same as when the pretty girls would do it, he wasn't reeling in horror for starters, and he seemed to be inspecting me instead of rejecting me. In about a month, but then I have to get retainers and depending on how my palate expander worked I may knee stop, dude don't talk about your braces and shit no one cares. I never did know when to shut up. Oh right, ha 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 sorry Jay. My already red from the acne and topical creams face turning a shade of beet. I was overcompensating for oversharing. I was really awkward. Can you get a ride home an hour after school ends? His inquiry seemed earnest, and didn't feel like he was going to tie me to the flagpole or give me an atomic wedgie, it felt like he wanted to help. I probably can. Yeah, why? Come to the weight room with me after school. Football team does weight training and we're allowed to bring in one underclassman outsider to try out for a couple weeks. If you make it, you can try out for the squad next year. I. I don't know how to work out, Jay the forced grin had disappeared from my face, replaced by a. Half frown of dejection knowing full well that I could barely lift myself up on the chin-up bar more than twice, I wasn't going to fare well in the weight room with kids twice my size. Don't worry dude, I got you. And he slapped me on the back hard enough to half knock the wind out of me. I smiled at him, not forced this time, it felt real. All of it felt real. Over the next year, I got the braces off, cut my shitty hair, and hit the gym so fucking hard that I went from 150 pounds of squishy preteen flub to 165 pounds of rock fucking solid muscle and under 10% body fat or some poop. The jocks starting giving me high fives in the halls. I was dubbed the leprechaun. I'm scared of my wife, and it low-key turns me on. Let me start off by saying that I'm a 27-year-old guy, and my wife is 26. We've been together for 9 years and married for 7. It's safe to say that our relationship has grown in ways I never thought possible, but I've stumbled upon a realization that I never thought I'd admit to. I'm kind of truned on by how intimidating my wife can be. I've always been an introvert. I shy away from confrontation and generally just prefer to be left to my own devices. When my wife and I started dating when we were around 17, it was she who did all the pursuing. I had liked her for like 3 years, but never had the courage to tell her. So, when I finally did, she took charge and asked me out. In fact, she initiated almost every milestone in our relationship. She's an extrovert to the core, loud, fierce, and never backing down, especially if she knows she's right. And those are all qualities I genuinely love about her. But a couple of weeks ago, something strange happened. I was out with my friends, and we were casually talking about our spouses. One of my friends made a comment about how intense my wife can be. And without thinking, I blurted out that it kind of turned me on. I immediately blushed and felt embarrassed, staying quiet for the rest of the outing. But the thought stuck with me. When I got home, I started thinking about it more and realized how much her attitude and strong nature resonated with me, and not just in an intimate way. Whenever she's passionate about something and stands up for it, I find myself feeling a surge of pride and excitement. I can't help but smile like a goofy teenager, thinking, that's my wife. Today, something happened that brought all these feelings to the forefront again. We got into a bit of a fight. We usually don't argue in front of the kids, but we do have moments when we're not as loving to one another. She was feeding our daughter, and when I walked into the room, she gave me the nastiest glare you could think of. I was taken aback, and yet, my pants just erupted with my nut stain on them. My dad told me he wishes he had a son instead of a daughter. I, 17F, am not very close with my father, 41 meters, due to him not wanting to spend much time with me. When I was little, me and my mom, 39F, did lots of fun activities together and she always played with me and entertained me resulting in us having a good relationship now years later, but whenever I'd try to get my dad to play with me or watch something with me he'd be uninterested and tell me to go play with my mom. This happened practically every day with me wanting to watch him work on his car or ask him to play but he always pushed me off and as I grew up, I believed that my dad just didn't like me so I asked him to play or teach me stuff less and less. He would only do stuff with me on my birthday and holidays though he always made sure I was fed when I was hungry and if I was upset he'd comfort me but other than that he would avoid me. Now to today, I was in the kitchen getting a snack and my dad was outside in the backyard on the phone with one of his friends. I could hear what he was talking about from the open kitchen window but I was ignoring it until he said my name in their conversation. 
I listened in more and heard him telling his friend that he wishes he had a son more than a daughter because he never wanted a girl and didn't try to build much of a relationship with me because of it and said he had tried to get my mom to have a second kid to see if he could get a son but my mom didn't want two children at the time so he just ignored me when I was able to walk and talk so he could focus on other things and let my mom raise me. I went to my room after hearing this and I'm writing this now. I want to tell my mom because how hurt I feel but I also don't want to cause an argument between them since they are really close.